NFL com draft analyst Lance Zerloin is my special guest on today's Locked on Giants podcast. Plus, we're answering some of the listener submitted questions. That's coming your way next. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of the Lock on Giants podcast is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lock on today to get started. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Lock on Giants podcast, part of the Lock on podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Trader, and I'm your host. And uh, as promised, on today's podcast, we have NFL.com. Draft analyst Lance Sirloin, who is going to give us some lowdown on uh, the draft movement, prospects, giant needs, all kinds of cool stuff. Now, before we uh, get into the interview with Lance Sirloin, just real quick, he was not able to join me on video. For those of you who are watching YouTube, um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to join me on video since he was doing the interview from his car. So, um, you know. I just wanted to, to let you know if you're wondering what's wrong with the video, that's what's going on. So you'll see me on video, but you won't see Lance. You'll just see a picture of him. So um, after that, after uh, the interview with Lance, which by the way, uh, Lance only had about 20 minutes or so to give me uh, before he had to go into the studio to tape stuff for the NFL network. Um, after that, I'm going to answer some of your questions that you've submitted that uh, have been sitting in my inbox. So that's going to be the last segment of the show. So hope you enjoy the podcast and uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the interview with Lance Zerline. I am pleased to welcome in on the podcast NFL draft analyst Lance Zerline, whose work I've long admired. Uh, Lance is part of a team over at NFL.com who's been putting up draft prospects, mock drafts, and uh, the NFL Network, by the way, of which he is a part, will be providing live coverage of the 2023 NFL Draft in Kansas City from April 27th to the 29th. Lance, thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your schedule to join me. Sure. It's great to be here. Lance, let's jump right into it. Um, I want to get your take on, you know, with the combine in the books and most of the pro days in the books, where has the greatest value in this draft class kind of shaped up? Um, Value. I would say value is relative to where you can get starting level players in multiple rounds. So I would say from a value standpoint, tight end is a really good value position this year uh, in the draft. Probably the worst is linebacker. Um, tight end is really good. I believe that interior defensive line actually has. Um, I actually believe that there are some players who are not being talked about who are going to end up being starters in the league, and those players are going to come in rounds three, four, five, and in some cases six. So I think defensive tackle, even though there's there's not a lot of start potential there, I do think there's pretty good value from a standpoint of just in the truest sense of value. Um, Defensive end has good value. Uh, You know, edge rusher, that's a good value spot this year between three, four outside linebackers, you know, the stand-up rushers and then the 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 hand-on-the-ground guys. I think there's some pretty good value in that one as well in the first two days and into the fourth round is not bad. So I think those are good. You always have pretty good value at running back just because the nature of the position there's players who end up starting that, you know, come from undrafted to middle round picks. And there's always pretty good value at that position as well. You mentioned there's some guys that could potentially be starters later in the draft. I think you said third, fourth, sixth round. Can you give us some names? Yeah, I would say uh, Cameron Young from Mississippi State would be one. Uh, Jack uh, Jacqueline Roy, uh, who is a defensive tackle, number 99. For LSU would be a player like that, who I think is maybe a day, eh, maybe a third round pick from LSU. (laughs) Big, strong, physical, can really stop the run. There's a guy named Broderick Washington out of Western Kentucky, who's more like a fourth, maybe a eh, could be a fifth round pick 
And he's a guy that I think is going to be a good backup who eventually might be able to find some starting reps as well. So those are, I mean, Keanu Benton, who I'm not as high on from Wisconsin. I think he goes in the second round. Um, some people will name him, but the three I named, I believe will go anywhere between the third round and the fifth round. And that's an example of three guys who just off the top of my head, um, I believe DJ Dale is another one from, from Alabama. There's another player who I think some, somewhere around the fourth or fifth round could end up getting starting reps for a team as well. So that's an example of some of the depth that is out there in the middle rounds, maybe in day three. Lance, when you look at where the Giants are drafting at number 25, I mean, do you see more of a cluster of grades where, where guys have, you know, the similar grades and, and maybe it, it might behoove the Giants to trade down? Or do you think they can come away with, a you know, a, a really good player that can be a day one starter there? Well, I think I think both. Uh, you know, it depends. Giants are, you know, the roster's in a lot better shape than it was a couple of years ago. So the Giants are in a position where they can kind of handpick some players. I think there's an interesting linebacker prospect, uh, Drew Sanders, who, you know, I think makes some sense. I gave I gave the Giants, um, I gave the Giants, I believe I gave them in my mock draft, uh, uh, Brian Branch. Mm -hmm. from because I think he's really another Julian Love really I mean Julian Love I, I like Julian Love coming out of Notre Dame but he was a cornerback and I was very surprised that he was able to transition to safety well Brian Branch is a safety who plays a lot of nickel cornerback uh, he's not the fastest player but his play speed's pretty good but he's smart he doesn't make mistakes he's always where he's supposed to be he's a physical run defender I think you can play him at a variety of alignments so if Brian Branch were there at number 25, and he very well may be for the Giants, I think that's one of those perfect <clears throat> need fits where you can stick him at safety, you can let him play some cornerback, uh, you can move him around the field. You know, he's a guy that I would I would take. But if I'm the Giants, I'm probably targeting three different players maybe. And, you know, it depends on how they have him graded at whatever position they feel like are the most important. And if those guys go off the board, don't hesitate to move back because you may find that that teams, I believe teams could be interested in trading up. I know Giants fans would like to have a wide receiver as well, and I considered giving them, in fact, in my mock at one point, I did have Quentin Johnston going there, but I just think there's better value. Honestly, I think there's better value in, in getting Brian Branch, who I think is going to end up being a better football player than some of the receivers that could potentially be there for the Giants in the first round. I, I think that's one where you maybe wait until another round and draft receiver and, and maybe even wait until another year. Hey, Giant fans, the NBA playoffs are almost here, and there's no better place to get in on the action than at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on and sign up today to claim your no sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be hoisting the trophy. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Hey, Giant fans, thanks so much for making the Locked on Giants podcast your first listen or watch every day. Now make your second listen Locked on NFL Draft. Damian Parson and Keith Sanchez have been hard at work providing in-depth coverage of the biggest NFL draft prospects and the sleeper picks, guys that maybe we're not talking about but should be. Find the Locked On NFL Draft podcast wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Speaking of trades, usually in the first round, it could, you know, anything goes. We've already had one big blockbuster trade with the Bears and the, and the Panthers what are you hearing regarding some potential other trades? And how do you think these trades, if they pan out, how might they affect how the first round falls? Well, so the Colts to me are, are a big one because the Colts, <laughs> you know, it would it would be a trade, but it would really it really wouldn't be a trade. It'd be a free agent signing. If Lamar Jackson were to go to the Colts and the Ravens got the fourth pick of the draft, obviously. You know, the Colts are set. They'd lose their fourth pick of the draft in their first next year, but then we'd be looking at the Ravens and are the Ravens immediately going to address with a quarterback? Because in either situation, the Colts or the Ravens, both teams were looked at as being teams who were going to draft quarterbacks. So that might not change it that much, but I think Bill Belichick and, and the potential need at quarterback, he seems to be, Mac Jones seems to be falling out of favor quickly. So I think they're a little bit of a wild card. 
Um, I believe Arizona Cardinals, there's really no reason for them to draft third. They, they don't have a good roster. They need to trade back and add more picks. The quarterback position is going to be something that, that people scramble for just because the supply side is a little down this year. So, you know, I could see Arizona, really a trade from Arizona could shake some things up. But it's not going to be – what I think is interesting um, this year is that I don't think – I'm not sure Seattle makes a move, uh, you know, in trades in this draft. And I'm not even sure they take quarterback in this draft. They may wait till next year. Um, they might be a team that trades out, believe it or not, because John Schneider likes doing that. The Lions, I'm not sure I see the Lions taking quarterback. Seven, the Raiders, of course, could do that. Eight, the Falcons could, but I don't – I don't think that's what they're going to do. I think the interesting names are, are teams like Minnesota, but they don't have draft capital to do it really. But that's an interesting team that has a quarterback with an expiring contract. The Texans in my mock draft, I had them taking a defensive player with the second pick and then trading back up for a quarterback with the Raiders moving up to seven. Um, so I, I think there are a variety of teams that could potentially um, surprise. You know, you could see the Lions – take take defensive player or take a need player at number six and then um and then you know do something like you know take a quarterback use their 18th pick trade it up and take a quarterback then that's something you could see as well so i just i don't think that the top 10 is going to go the way most people think i think there's going to be some chaos that's going to ensue Speaking of the first round, Lance, who are some of the players that maybe a few weeks ago we didn't have, you know, we weren't talking about his first round picks that have, you know, through pro days, again, uh, the combine, who are some of those players that have kind of worked their way into the first round discussion? Oh, I think Elijah Cansey, defense tackle for um, Pitt. I think Cedric Tillman, wide receiver from Tennessee, could um, – uh, DJ Turner, cornerback from Michigan, is another player you need to look for. And uh, Hendon Hooker. There has been some talk about Hendon Hooker getting a first-round pick just so teams can buy into a fifth year since he's recovering from ACL tear. So I would say uh, Tuli Tuapoloto from uh, USC is another one to keep an eye on as well. If you would, Lance, give me one ideal pick for the Giants on offense and defense and what round you think that player – might be there. Oh, I think uh, I think Josh Downs would be a guy that I would love in the second round. You know, although you have Wandell Robinson, um, and then I would say, so Josh Downs would be one potentially, or even Cedric Tillman for the Giants in the second round, and then in the first round, I would say Brian Branch defensively. That's the guy I gave you, and I think that's I think that's the perfect pick and the perfect fit for the Giants. What do you think is something that we're not talking about that's probably going to set everybody on their ear? Because there always just seems to be a curveball thrown every year. And I don't know what you're hearing, but uh, if you had a guess as to what might, you know, make everybody go, whoa, didn't see that coming. What do you what do you see that being as? Wow. Um, I would see Bill Belichick trading into the top 10 for a quarterback. That would be one I think that would set everybody off right now. Mac Jones is only two years into what is potentially a five-year deal. So you're still on a rookie contract. He had a really good rookie year. We know he did not have an optimal situation. You could move Mac Jones for presumably a second round pick. Um, and you could start all over on rookie contract again with a guy like Anthony Richardson or Will Levis and have Bailey Zappi play ahead of them as the, the, the option until they're ready to play. So in other words, you could still move Mac Jones, get a draft pick, and then use that draft pick to help you move up again for another, you know, for that quarterback. You would presumably move up for the quarterback first and then trade, you know, Mac Jones later on. But I think that's something just to keep an eye on because Bill Belichick has, has a long history of if he thinks he missed on a guy or if he doesn't like a guy, boom, he will he will be done with you after two years. It doesn't take long for Belichick. And he saw what Philadelphia did to win. He's got to you know, I'm sure Bill knows that he's not going to coach forever. I'm sure he'd like to be relevant in that division. And you've got the Jets that look like a factor. Miami's becoming tougher. The The Bills obviously are already there. One of the things he may look at is what the Philadelphia Eagles did with Jalen Hurts and say, you know what, I'm going to try this with Anthony Richardson. I could see him taking a big swing this year. Lance, you mentioned that 
teams are looking at what the Eagles have done. Um, you know, we look at the NFL and how there's copycat going on, you know, uh, team looks at an offense or a defensive trend and they copy it um, from a successful team. What are you seeing or what do you anticipate in the draft uh, as far as teams maybe copying what other successful teams have done as far as building their roster up? Well, so tight end is going to be one where you <clears throat> where you try to get two tight ends and then you become more varied in your approach where you can run out of it or throw out of it. I think we're going to see a lot more 12 personnel. So I think one trend is going to be trying to find, even if you have one tight end, looking for that second tight end, whether it's first, first, second, or third round to really um, help make your offense less predictable out of the three wide receiver set and start throwing in more two tight end sets. I think that's going to be one. I think we're going to continue to see teams look to move tackles inside because pass protection at guard is such a major issue that I think we'll see more and more teams look to uh, move tackles to guards. That's something that's already been going on, but now we're going to see more and more of it. And I think with this year, we're seeing a willingness to take chances on outliers and size. Kalijah Cansey is 280, 285 pounds, a defensive tackle. Ed Oliver was drafted ninth by Buffalo not that long ago. And Cansey, to me, is sometimes even more explosive on tape. So you have an, a smaller-than-normal quarterback, a smaller-than-normal defensive tackle, smaller-than-normal wide receivers in this year's draft. I think the willingness to get outside the comfort zone and draft outside the physical norms is something that we're going to continue to see. All right, Giant fans, that was Lance Zerloin of NFL.com and the NFL Network. He's a draft analyst. And again, you can catch the NFL Network's live coverage of the 2023 draft in Kansas City, April 27th and April 29th. All right, coming up on the Locked on Giants podcast, I'm going to answer a few of your questions that you submitted. So don't go anywhere. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. And as promised, I'm going to answer some of your questions here on the podcast. So let's get into them. The first one comes from Rodney B., who wants to know, uh, let's see, he writes, I've noticed that the mock drafts produced by the national organizations are all predicting something very similar for the Giants in the first three rounds, some variation of receiver, center, and cornerback. Do you think the Giants might pick a defensive tackle in there somewhere instead? And is there anyone that you like that you can envision the Giants drafting? Rodney, great question. Um, one thing I have learned in all the years I have been covering uh, the, chair, the uh, draft is that there's always going to be a curveball thrown in there. Now, could I see the Giants picking a defensive tackle in the first three rounds? Yes, I could. Um, as far as a name, uh, one's not coming to me off the top of my head, but I will tell you this much. Um, I'm going to be doing a mock draft over on Giants country. And uh, I'll be able to see who's on the board. But here's why I say that I think I could see um, a defensive tackle fitting in there. Um, the Giants are going to sign eventually uh, Dexter Lawrence to a longer term deal because he's still kind of young enough. Leonard Williams, though, um, 28, I think he's 28 years old. This Right now he's entering the last year of his contract. He's got avoidable year next year. I do know the Giants would like to extend him, maybe get that 32 million cap hit number down. Whether or not that happens, though, remains to be seen. So that said, what's your depth behind Leonard Williams? You know, they added Raheem Nunes Roches. I get that. Um, he's going to be a rotational guy, but who's your depth behind Leonard Williams? So, yeah, I could definitely see. Um, the Giants adding a, uh, a defensive tackle somewhere in the third, the, the first three rounds of the draft. Um, and I apologize, I don't have a name for you, but uh, yeah, that's that's a very good point. And I, I think that's a point that a lot of people are overlooking that maybe we shouldn't be overlooking because it, it does make sense. Because, you know, look, when you draft, you don't just look at the needs you have this year. You have to look at the needs you have for the following year and the year after that. And um you know, at some point, unless they can get Leonard extended, and even if they get Leonard extended, I don't see it being for more than, you know, maybe 
a couple of years at the most. So you probably want to have a backup plan, I would think, in there. Because we saw what happened last year when Leonard Williams and um, Dexter Lawrence were out of the lineup. We saw the drop off. So good point. Good catch and very good question. So thank you, Rodney, for that question. All right. Andrew G checks in via email and he goes, uh, let's see. Do you think uh, Joe Shane will double dip at multiple positions in the draft, i.e. two interior offensive linemen, two receivers? Uh, You know what, Andrew? I could see it happening. Um, I know the mock draft I did on this show, I had, I think, one player at every position. But it really depends on who's on the board and, who, and, and the value. But Because don't forget, Andrew, they could also double dip in the post-draft uh, scramble to sign undrafted free agents. So if it were me, unless there were two prospects that, I, you know, at the same position that I absolutely had to have, I might just say, you know what, I've got post-draft that I can maybe pick up a gem or two. So... Yeah, uh, I could see it happening, but do I think it'll happen? Um, right now, I would say no, but ask me again in a couple weeks as we get a little closer. Joe Shane, by the way, scheduled to speak to the media for his draft preview uh, presser on April 20th, my birthday. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we will uh, we'll, we'll maybe get some more clues as to what the Giants might be thinking at that time. So thank you for that question. All right. Let me see if we have anybody else. Yes. This one is from big guy, uh, 0658 who wants to know, is there any update health news on last year's rookie class that we lost during the season? Uh, and how will their current status impact the giants draft decisions for April? All right, big guy. Um, they won't, the giants are going to, Phil needs regardless. I, I don't think any of the health statuses or lack thereof are going to affect what the Giants are going to do in the draft. As far as updates, we have not been in the building since the end of the season. The media will next be in the building on April 20th. Um, prior to that, we are scheduled to talk to Brian Dable and uh, select players on uh, April 17th, which is the opening of the off-season program. So we may get an update there, but uh, right now the updates are very, you know, they're very scarce. And quite frankly, it's only April. So maybe, you know, a guy like, let's say, Wandale Robinson, who is, you know, relatively in, early into his rehab, Let's see what he looks like or where he's at when we get a little closer to the end of the, of the uh, preseason, you know? So in other words, I wouldn't concern myself too much about it right now. I think, you know, the, the medical staff's on top of it, I'm sure. Um, and they have an, you know, they're anticipating when guys are going to be ready to go. So I'm not overly concerned right now with anybody coming off injury. I, I do think Wandale Robinson might not be ready for the start of the season, but you know, you never know. I don't, I don't know how he has been progressing. Um, maybe he's ahead of schedule. I know Sterling Shepard was ahead of schedule, um, even though he's not a, a, you know, from the draft class last year, but the point being is let's see where they're at when we get into training camp, that's where it's going to be more important as opposed to sitting here and wringing our hands where they're at right now. All right, Jay fans, that's all I have from the uh, listener submitted questions, all of those submitted via email, by the way. If you want to send me a question, you can send it to me at Locked On Giants Podcast at gmail.com. You can tweet it to me at Patricia underscore trainer and make sure you use the hashtag Ask P Train. Uh, you can also send them to me on my Instagram account, my Instagram account is at Patty Traina, P-A-T-T-I-T-R-A-I-N-A. All right, coming up on the Locked on Giants podcast, Emery Hunt is going to be joining me for a show. So that's coming up. Um, Emery and I are taping or due to tape on Friday. So that'll probably be next Monday's show. Um, otherwise, we still have one more show to get through uh, tomorrow. So stay tuned as to what we're going to do. 
Thank you so much for making the Lockdown Giants podcast your first listen of the day or if watching on YouTube, your first watch of the day. Until next time, Giant fans, thank you so much. We'll see you soon.